Donka, what do you think? Do you like it? Is it up to your standards? Are you not sure of your new cat bed, Dom Gats? Are you not sure? Are you being shy? All right, it's minus 28 right now with the windshield. It says it's closer to minus 40. I got tired of boosting my truck. I used the MicroStart XP and I brought the capacitor one just in case. But I just finished getting a new battery because I got sick and tired. And I noticed for the last little while, things were acting weird because my volts were at like 14.7, 14.6. And then as soon as this cold snap hit, that's it. My truck wouldn't start. I had to boost it. But um, I'm just going to turn it off and restart it just for peace of mind. Oh, yeah. Because before I would drive it. And I could drive to work, but then as soon as I turned my vehicle off, it wouldn't start. And I was hooped. And of course, you know, Ford's got the uh, power locks on this truck with the only key lock on this side. Well, that lock was fucking frozen. And there's like panic mode trying to get the vehicle opened. I finally got it done, so I'd left my truck open all day at work, but fuck me. I'm glad this is finished and solved. And do you got a new box? Where did you find a new box, Tomcat? Are you trying to get in the box? Are you? Am I interrupting you, Tom Gats? Well, it's minus 27 outside, and the garage is holding at minus four, so I can't complain. This cold snap has been friggin' brutal. Killed the battery in my truck. It's been cold all week. It's supposed to get 38 degree weather change. So by Monday, it's supposed to be like plus five. We were down to close to minus 40 this past week. And uh, I need to run to KMS Tools now, pick something up. And I'm gonna come back, start doing the prep work on the heads and talk a little bit on what happened. She is friggin' cold. Go over and listen to the power steering whine. Even with it plugged in, the coolant was at eight degrees. Well, on the bright side, when it's this cold, nobody's vehicle will start, so the freeways are virtually empty. If you notice on my right there, it's the Tesla dealership in Calgary. However, I'd like to know how well they work in this minus 40 weather. We're gone for an hour and garage is only at seven and a half degrees. Well, that's what I went to KMS Tools for. It is a bead roller for sheet metal. It's gonna come in handy for some future projects. And I also picked up a shear die as well. Well, it took an awful lot to uh, get outside in the garage today. I'm not going to lie. I have no motivation when it's this cold. Cold snap's supposed to break tomorrow. This video is just going to be a short video. As uh, the focus of this video is to talk about what I think what really happened. Why the heads were leaking coolant when I filled it. Versus the company that refreshed the motor says. And then gonna go down the rabbit hole even further so in the last video i briefly showed an ls rebuilding book that i had purchased and that night after i got the head stripped down i started reading it and that's really where i found the information or what i think could be the cause i don't know because this is filmed probably two months before it is uploaded so i don't know what you guys had said in the previous video what the cause could be but as you can see right here, the early LS heads, so late 90s, uh, I think maybe up until like 2000, for whatever reason, the heads had a notch in them right here, right? Both these heads 
have a notch in them. And by that notch, you cannot use a multi-layer steel gasket unless it's specially designed for those heads. So that's going to come into play with these head gaskets right here, the ones that were used with it. And I'll show you a comparison to the head gaskets that are supposed to be with it is that I don't believe that this head gasket is was slightly too large and that the head gasket crinkled when it was torqued down. I really believe that they installed the wrong head gasket and were trying to backpedal. So this is where we're gonna go down the rabbit hole even further. So as you guys know, I have little trust, little faith in any company out there. So the company that refreshed the motor had offered to uh, replace the parts that needed it and are even redoing the job for me. I asked them for the head gaskets and bolts. And at the same time, I also bought my own just because i that's how much faith I have in people. So I'm going to show you the ones I bought. So on the Mali website, these are the ones that are recommended for those heads. It's the 54441. And as you can see where the recess is, because the heads are going to be, the uh, gas is going to be flipped over. So obviously this placement of that notch is going to be different. These head gaskets have the recess for those notches, which is what you clearly see in the heads. Now, the person who refreshed the engine dropped these ones off last night, and these are a 54442. And I don't know what the difference is. I'm going to show you a comparison, but uh, they're not designed for those heads. So when you put them side by side, I don't really see any difference whatsoever, but there's two different part numbers. Will these ones could have worked with the head, not have it leaking? Anything's possible, but these are the ones that are designed for the head. 5441, those are the ones I'm going to use. So I'm just going to put those away somewhere, probably never to be used again. So this is the info I pulled off the website where it talks about the multi-layer steel design for the 4.8 5.3 in 2001 and 6 lead in 2002. The cylinder head gaskets were no longer interchangeable. This prevents engine builders and technicians installing the best multi-layer steel designs in older engines of the GM LS series due to resulting coolant leaks, which I had. Now, of course, if you go down to the bottom there where it says application, it says 54441 GM 4.8 99 to 2007, where the part numbers I got are 2007, 2008, and 97 to 2005, uh, 5.7. I also picked up some Velpro um, studs because depending, of course, on your engine, determines what kind of bolt since this is the early 2000 uh, the difference with that is is that of course two of the head bolts are shorter or the later style they're all the same length so that matters a lot when you purchase it i know some people have commented that they have broke a stud when installing now that can be very possible at the same time a lot of that is prep um there's a lot of work going into cleaning out the holes in the block before you install the studs, that's what I'm gonna work on today. And uh, we're gonna find out if I'm gonna bust any or not. So I gave you the info. So in my opinion, I'm a firm believer that the wrong head gaskets were installed. I wanna know what your opinion is, if you agree with me or if you agree uh, with the company that refreshed the motor. But once again, this is how little faith I have in any company, no matter who they are, what they do, because I seem to be plagued with all the issues. I don't know what the fuck it is. Maybe I'm a, you know, let's send this guy all the shit product because he lives in Canada. And he's just going to deal with it instead of sending it back. Because it's a big hassle to ship across the border.
And since I'm already going down the rabbit hole, I decided I'd probably better install a new block heater because I don't even know if the one that was in there even works. So I added some more thread sealant just because I don't want it to leak. Slap that bad boy in the block, tighten her down, and let's hope for the best. That's all I can say. So I made myself a poor man's tap to clean out the holes in the cylinder block because if you don't clean them out, make sure nothing's in them. Try to get as much fluid out and crap out as possible. It's going to give you a false reading when you go to torque the heads because the bolts are torque to yield. And your first pass is 22 foot-pounds. And if it's not done properly, then it may give you a false read and screw it up. I'm also boroscoping the holes. Make sure not, I don't see any damage to the threads. And then finally using the air compressor to blow the holes out and hope for the best. Use a scraper here. Try to get off as much as that silicone crap as I can. I'm going to reuse with gaskets. Even though they're gasketless header, I did some research. Quite a few people have used gaskets without any issue, so it's going to be the easiest way for me. I found if you ever go down this route, scraping off the silicone is a little bit of a pain in the butt, but Scotch Bright Pad afterwards works really good to clean the surface off. Now, some people may cringe at the fact that I'm using a scotch bright pad because there's so many stories and information going down the rabbit hole that the aluminum oxide can get into your bearings and destroy the engine. I am not too concerned about that at all. I've been using it for years and never had an issue. Got everything prepped for tomorrow. Block is all cleaned out. I chased it with my poor man's tap. Shouldn't have any issues because the key thing is if your holes are not clean and you go to torque your new bolts in and you get your torque spec off because it's only 22 pounds, could spell trouble. That being said, torque to yield to get the degrees, I picked these up last weekend because I sure could have used them removing the studs. So I got... Um, this one here that's only good for 500 foot-pounds and this ratcheting one is good for 450 foot-pounds so we'll see how they play out tomorrow hopefully that be enough that i could reef on it to get my torque to yield we'll soon find out it is motherfucking beer time now it's been minus 40 all week and the fridge is off but it's uh beers are nice cold I'm gonna have a chill coot. I haven't had one of these in a while. All right, it's motherfucking beer time. I want to apologize for the short video. I figured the next video is gonna be more important is uh, getting the heads back on and filling it full of coolant and see if the issue is indeed fixed. I'm still a firm believer that the wrong head gaskets were installed, but let's crack open this beer motherfucking beer time from yukon brewing after a week of minus 40 in the garage in the fridge works out pretty good not even any ice it's fucking cold though god damn that's cold so i want to thank you guys for joining along in the adventure it's uh another setback and I'm probably sure there's going to be more setbacks to come. But got to keep thinking positive. Overcome the situation. Turn lemons into lemonade. By uh, doing this project, I got a few more videos out of it. So it's not for nothing. Content is will be on my other channel, the DIY and everything else. So I want to thank you guys for watching if you made it this far. And... Uh, Fingers crossed, let's hope in the next video that things are smooth sailing and I don't have to take the heads off again because I'll probably just set it on fire and burn it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Motherfucking beer time!